Hello. Reservation for Murdoch, please. Mr. and Mrs. Murdoch. Actually, I'm Mr. Murdoch. Yes, and Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Murdoch. Murdoch and Ogden's honeymoon is something that we were excited to deal with in light of them getting married. And it was just a matter of figuring out something that would be fun for them to do in another place. So we thought New York was exactly where they would go. Honeymoons had originated as family events. By this era, 1902, it would be just the wedding couple who went on the honeymoon. But it would probably be something like a night in a hotel or a weekend in a hotel. It might be, for example, Niagara Falls, which was already famous by 1902 as a honeymooning place. It seems it's time to retire to the bedroom, Detective. Indeed it does, Doctor. Niagara Falls is typically the honeymoon capital of Canada, and people still do honeymoon there. But with Niagara Falls, there was that escapism, and I think we still have that happening now. You have the romance of the falls. You can couple it with an amazing escape to Niagara on the lake, which is wine country. So you can get a little bit of glitz and glamour with Niagara Falls, and you can have some rest and relaxation in Niagara on the lake. So it gives you that option where you're kind of close to lots of things, and it's really not that far from home for lots of people in southern Ontario particularly. Yeah, it's really fun. Ever since a few years ago when they did an episode featuring Ford and James Pendrick inventing an electric car, we felt like it was time to really do a story about cars, about the people who loved them and advocated for them at the time, and about the crazy things that might happen when people were unfamiliar with them. In Toronto around 1902, automobiles weren't particularly common, but if you flip through newspapers like The Globe and The Star during 1902, you'll see an increasing amount of car advertisements. There was a Toronto Automobile Club that was formed as early as 1901. Basically, they were a bunch of car enthusiasts who would get together and go for drives, usually leaving from Queen's Park on a Saturday afternoon. Perhaps Perhaps the key member of the Toronto Automobile Club was Dr. Perry Doolittle, reputedly the first man in Canada to buy a used car back in 1899. Doolittle was also credited as being the man who came up with the idea of the Trans-Canada Highway. If every man has a motor car, the streets will be overwhelmed. Well, then we'll build more streets, all interconnected with a single roadway that reaches from coast to coast. Now that's an idea. What a journey that would be. It'd take forever. What would you call it? the transverse continental motor car thoroughfare. It's a bit of a mouthful. Maybe just the Trans Canada. No, that's a stupid name, George. When I read the car episodes before, I was like, oh, I'll probably never really get to do that. So I'm really happy that they threw Dr. Grace in there and she loves it. She's a little daredevil. You have like neutral, and then when you want to rev it up, you got to pull back. And then when it's ready to go and you hear it going over, then you push all the way forward and then it'll go. And then you just keep it from the gas and kind of listen. There can't be much to it. Watching Georgina drive that old car today was hilarious. I really enjoyed that. Seeing her with her bonnet and sort of scarfular thing tying the bonnet and in the old car. Yeah, and kicking my ass. I think that their car was much faster than ours. This one hadn't, probably hasn't been running for oh, probably about maybe 20 years. There's accidentally water got left in it and it froze the cylinder head, so we had to pull that off and repair it. But the rest of it was still okay. We just put a gas and oil in it and check and make sure it's got some spark and then away it went. They're fairly simple. There's not too much that can go wrong with them. As long as there's gas and spark and compression, they'll start. It's very difficult to accelerate on any kind of incline. Not a whole lot of mustard on those cars. The best comparison is it's kind of like driving a lawnmower. Just the fact that chasing each other in these cars at all is sort of absurd. This is called a process trailer. It's a very low profile trailer. If you put a, a car or anything on it, it doesn't look like it's really elevated above the road. And the other nice thing about it, it's very wide, legally wide, like a semi. So basically you can get the camera in the front and you can get the camera at the side at the same time. For all the close-ups of the actors, now they don't have to concentrate on actually physically driving the car. It makes it way less complicated. I've done driving scenes before where I had to actually be in the car. You're kind of so aware of driving and speaking that you get a bit nervous, so it's kind of nice to just be on the rig. We're carrying too much weight. Jackson, you're slowing us down. Uh, uh, oh, Jim Puffman. Uh, uh. Uh. I don't get to work with Georgina very often, just on scenes here and there. So it's nice to spend a few days with her and actually do a few scenes. Got quite some big scenes. I've always really liked the chemistry between Bracken Reed and Grace. When we have had to do scenes together, it's very playful and 
It's great to work with Tommy. Like, I think he's a fabulous actor. It was very chitty chitty bang bang. I don't have any interest in cars whatsoever. I do own a car. I guess me from A to B to the shops, kids. That's it. I'm not like Johnny Harris. Johnny Harris makes love to his cars. I'm a bit of a motorhead. I've always been in the cars and motorbikes. I got a 98 Corvette, a couple of motorbikes, and a Jeep that I keep back in Newfoundland. I've never bought a car, but I'm going to buy a car soon. So I do like the old kind of classic looking cars, like a Beetle or a Mini. I like the Fiats, very European cars. Um, but yeah, she's all right. Rio. We have to name her. Betty, I think her name is. Red Betty. <laughs> Dundas is just a little west of Hamilton. Uh, it's really part of Hamilton, but it is a town unto itself. There are so many good features about Dundas. It's a great place to live. It's a wonderful place to shop. There are great studio tours, a fantastic art school that's been here for 50 years. Great food, great restaurants, great small independent food stores. Just even to walk up and down the main street is fantastic. All right, lads, on we go. <laughs> Ontario is ours for the discovery. One second, Louis. <laughs> Depress the pedal. Ah, yep, there we are. Depress the gas. Yep, uh, yep, yep. Put your back into it. Try it. Try it. Good man. Good man. Nice. 